Hello and welcome back to Fintechy Baat. We have with us today uh, Smita and Ram from Rangde. We had a very interesting conversation them conversation with them earlier on our earlier segment founder story. We talked about their journey of uh, essentially you know what inspired them and they really shared a lot of interesting anecdotes that I think would be inspiring as well as you know useful for all you budding entrepreneurs out there. Uh, having said that, you know, let's let's move into the next segment, the Dikhi Baat, and deep dive into what Rangde does, what essentially is social investing, and how it can create a huge impact on the economy. Uh, having said that, uh, let's let's start with the first things first, right? Uh, the name Rangde. What's the origin of that? Uh, anyone of you can kind of pick it. Would love to hear about it. Yeah, you know, so you know, I actually <clears throat> contributed to this name because I grew up in Lucknow, mm-hmm. even though I was born in Hyderabad, and okay. um, so the idea was to come up with a name which is not about money because this was okay. not about money. This is about enabling somebody to go about earning their livelihood, sustaining it, or scaling it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it came from this deep desire that so when both of us were in Oxford, you know. Uh, Especially my colleagues in the company mm. where I used to work, it was a uh, Austin-based company called Vignette. Um, my colleagues came from thirteen different countries, and 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 the way they looked at me was that here is a guy from a third world country, mm. right? Because even though India was, you know, getting the headlines that uh, GDP was growing at eight percent back then. Um, but at the same time, you know, there were documentaries being aired on Channel Four, Channel One, about India's grinding poverty. Mm-hmm. So, right. so the perception was that India is a really poor country. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so we wanted, you know, to really, you know, and and what we, it really bothered us because we, you know, we were wondering what would it take for India to become a developed nation? Right? Would right. it happen if we were to give our money? Would mm-hmm. it happen if we commit our time? Or would it happen if we commit ourselves to that idea? Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, so so that was the you know the the theory behind it, uh, and I I actually proposed the name and and Smita accepted the name. So this was the second time I proposed to her, so that she immediately accepted. <laughs> awesome. For me, actually, the the name and why I actually you know said yes, this was the name uh, mm-hmm. because I felt that you know it had the ability. Uh, to bring a lot of people people together, right? Because the problem that we have set out to solve is not something that the two of us can solve, mm. right? It's not something just a technology platform can solve. It's actually people. So what we are trying to do is create a movement of people, mm. and that and run they hand that appeal where you know it's like a call to action for somebody right. to join movement. So I was like, yes, that's it. We've got the name. So I still remember and visualize that scene now. <laughs> Amazing. So. Interesting, you know. Uh, the first time I heard about Rangde, my first uh, what do you say visualization or the first picture that came to my mind was this platform enables you to add color to underprivileged people's life by kind of you know contributing something towards that, and that is essentially what's the first uh, thing that uh, came to my mind. But I think this really uh, stuck well and uh, inspiring story indeed. Having said that, you know, let, let's kind of get into the social investing part of it. Uh, what essentially is social investing? So, first of all, I'll tell you like kind of what was my perspective when I first uh, came across right social investing concept. I don't know if I don't know. Call it my ignorance or uh, whatever. I really was not aware about uh, that existence of that as a platform. My first thing was like this is more like a donation that you kind of make every month. And uh, ultimately, that is essentially what happens, and you probably will get some rewards out of it or something like that. But ultimately, the concept comes from that you are actually giving out loans to people who will again actually repay back to you. And being investing for two years, I think this has really been a good investment class as well as you know an ability to make an impact. This was something that uh, earlier I was not able to understand. So. Would love to hear a bit more about you on your views about uh, social investing and essentially how you kind of develop it as a model. Uh, Smita, let's start with you. Sure, and ex- you actually hit the nail on the head, Shreyas. I and the, and the um, experience that you shared, you know, how your perception changed. You know, after you started 
engaging on the platform is exactly the journey that many of our social investors go through on the platform uh but then they start to then believe in this model of social investing once they've experienced the platform and why does this happen because the minute you actually come to the platform and look at farmers and artisans and entrepreneurs from the lidia the first thought i mean this is our bias that is there with the trust that makes us believe that oh you're probably doing charity you're probably doing anything to them no matter what we call it we call it social investing uh we have uh, very inspiring stories of them even despite all of that your first perception is that i'm probably just giving away money we're still okay with that because it's so difficult for us to fi- fight that bias in the first few seconds of somebody who's onboarding on the platform right True. but the minute the first repayment actually comes to you that's exactly. when you realize oh wow this farmer in jharkhand has actually repaid my loan exactly you know I've, so this model actually works and that's when somebody's engagement on the platform goes up and once you become a social investor i think you're a social investor for life because you know there are many people you know i i can speak for so many of our social investors who have probably never done donations or charity before because they felt that they it's a black hole they don't know what's happening on the other hand exactly at the end and they didn't believe in it at all and then they discovered rangde and so many of them have actually now gone on to update their linkedin profiles very proudly with you know that tagline saying i'm a runway social investor so that so runway social investors have that very strong emotional connect because now they've experienced the model and what we are, the whole philosophy behind social investing is to make sure that we invest in people mm. we do this with you know a sense of respect and dignity so that somebody's self esteem you know the self esteem of the recipient is also upheld right because think of it even during the worst humanitarian crisis that we were going through during the pandemic our farmers never came and asked us for a donation they actually came and asked us for can you help us with a loan mm-hmm. we made it an interest free loan because we are like that's our response to what was going around true us. and every single rupee that was raised as a social investment during the pandemic has been repaid by all the farmers who took those loans well wow. so i think it's social investing is really about questioning the status quo and mm. questioning our biases that we have about folks in rural india um it 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 is really to shake up our conscience and say that not everybody needs charity there are people out there who just need a level playing field and an equal opportunity True. so we are trying to actually create that through runway as a platform amazing amazing i think uh, and again i mean i i'll sound like a parrot repeating the same thing but this this entire thing is really inspiring uh, for you know people who are kind of inclined towards financial inclusion uh but having said that uh the social uh, investing as a thing as you as you rightly said right the first time i invested i was really not sure if the payment will come back but when you get the first repayment when it hits you and then you realize no this is actually more like an investment class and you are with that you also get the opportunity to enable people to come on the level play, uh, level playing field and you know make it happen i think that is that is in a league of its own Uh, having said that, uh, let, let's move on to the next piece about it. Uh, and this is essentially again at the uh, you know kind of sake of repeating a bit of what we talked about in the earlier segment. Uh, Ram, I would want you to highlight what essentially was the need to for this kind of a platform. I mean, uh, it is still a common knowledge uh, the need about this in uh, the circles that we kind of socialize in. But I think for general public, it's it's a bit of a, you know understanding gap over there. So you know. Over to you. I mean, would love to hear about what essentially was the need at that point of time. What is the current situation, and uh, what was life for the people that you are investing in uh, before Rangde, and now how is it after Rangde? Yeah, you know, so uh, you know, just to give a context, right? Only twelve point eight percent of India's eligible population have access to credit from a formal institution. Hmm. So a large population, right? A majority of India True. is underserved. True. Now they also don't have data. Mm-hmm. Nandan Nilkani once famously said, "India is not only a poor country; we are also a data poor country." True. So you don't have data. You don't have, therefore, access to formal credit. Mm-hmm. The approach which we took was to really 
unlock the social capital which we have in abundance in our country right so if, to give an example we work with community organizations mm-hmm. very credible very ethical have a fantastic track record they enjoy a lot of social capital with the communities they work mm-hmm. so we're using that as a instrument to underwrite the risk and give them access to the platform and every time we have done this you know we've seen this work beautiful now we've had our own share of failures but you know majority of them in fact all of them have worked beautiful so that's the model at the community level right. and they are very grateful because now they're getting to build their credit score for the first time they don't realize the impact initially just like our social investors but eventually they realize that oh now a local bank is willing to lend money to them Yeah, right. because some of them have become role model entrepreneurs in the community when they get media attention oh the local banks also you know come and say that chai peeni aayega bank pe so to <laughs> so, so so we've seen such amazing you know uh, mini revolutions if you will right for for a bank to go and offer credit is amazing uh so that's one part the other part is from a social investors point of view i think it's very clear we're creating a new asset class right a, a, yes a social impact asset class where it's a debt instrument right you get mm-hmm. moderate returns so you know, just like a money market mutual fund it's a debt instrument True. similarly it's a debt instrument unlike a money market mutual fund this is regulated by the reserve bank of india mm-hmm. and you are actually giving a formal loan it's not informal it's not crowd funding it's actually a proper debt which you're giving to a community member who is carefully selected and also supported by our impact partner of the mm-hmm. so uh, so this is in some sense in you know a livelihood outcome based credit program which always delivers you know in our experience so far got it got it so two things here and uh, uh, one is essentially with respect to the previous answer that smita gave and the second one is uh, what is the issue we just spoke about so first thing is more of a comment right uh, so what i realized while i was kind of you know uh, thinking about what you just said earlier was that the real beauty of the platform that you have built kind of lies in the transparency of it like you essentially see where the money is going who has been impacted what has it been used to and you also sometimes get to see the final result and that is something that really is that drives trust in the investors so yeah that was the first thing that i kind of wanted to really put out uh secondly uh really as you said ram uh, you know credit essentially we are a data poor com- uh, country as such and that is really the major uh, one of the major problems i recently you know uh, spoke about this at uh, one of the events that happened but what really kind of intrigues me or still bothers me about the entire credit situation of the ntc customers is that uh, when we talk about credit underwriting there are two main aspects right one is to be able to judge the ability to pay which is still something that can be kind of easily done once you have some digital footprint of the individual uh, based on the transactions and whatever but how do you kind of identify the intent to pay which is another major chunk because of which the cost of borrowing goes up for these uh, customers in the formal lending space uh, you know and specifically uh, you know i kind of uh, i had done a bit of reading on this as well uh, uh, about the gramin uh, project that was done earlier and about how the credit was uh, given out to women entrepreneurs that the intent to pay is ne- was never an issue there in the first place because the people were been empowered and they essentially had that thinking if i pay this back i'll get a bigger loan to kind of expand my business even more so that was one thing but how do you kind of measure this piece in the first place the intent to pay is there a way to quantify it or at least measure it in a way that the financial uh, the formal lending institutions essentially kind of start accepting it I think the magic really lies in the whole curation process or it's real so i'm touching upon it So we do, never do credit for the sake of credit, right. right? So the way we look at ourselves is we are a livelihood financing platform, and uh, we don't cookie cutter our loans. So mm-hmm. it's not just that everybody gets the same loan product. We actually design loan products to meet the unique livelihood needs of the community. For example, if the farmer needs 
uh, access to credit for post harvest services they need access to warehousing they need credit for that the loan product there would be very different from a farmer who is actually taking loans for inputs where they want to buy you know uh, seeds and fertilizers during the sowing season for them there is actually a repayment holiday because until they harvest they won't have the cash flows to actually repay the loans it's as simple as that but that is where the human centeredness of the platform actually comes in play because livelihood activities in rural india is diverse and we can't cookie cutter and you know just have one loan product and do a one size fits all model for our communities so that is where the magic really lies so this way we are able to ascertain two things what is the livelihood activity and the kind of cash flows it has what is the affordability so based on the cash flows what is the you know payment that this individual can make towards the loan so the loan amount the interest rate the loan tenure is all customizable yeah. and uh, yeah so this choice architecture that exists for our investees on the ground mm. actually helps in ensuring that you know they repay so unless there is this underlying livelihood need and that we are able to get these details we will not you know be funding that individual at all okay. in addition to that the critical to success interventions think about you know an entrepreneur right the for profit world they have an ecosystem of support services mm. right in addition to the capital that the investor brings to the table there's so much hand holding that is available to this entrepreneur so right. our partners on the ground make sure that these services are also available for the rural entrepreneurs so mm. our credit in addition to the hand holding and support they get from the partner you know becomes a force multiplier so that's the whole model amazing so uh, in this case uh, how is actually so i'm i'm just trying to bridge top a bit here right uh, in in uh, in in a situation where you are kind of customizing products for each and every specific livelihood uh, so i've seen anyone from shopkeepers uh, small kirana store owners farmers uh, you know local uh, mechanics and those everyone has a uh, like everyone essentially is on the platform and getting a loan so i always used to uh, kind of think about how essentially do you tailor the repayments to the cash flow of the because each has a different cash flow farmers have a very erratic cash flow cycles versus what a mechanic would have versus what a grocery store so so this kind of kind of clears that out uh you know having said that uh have you essentially uh, been in a situation wherein uh, there have been uh, essentially issues where it comes to the repayment uh, scenarios essentially because you uh, as i understand you're kind of working with uh, execution partners to curate the borrowers who are essentially there on the platform so has there been issues with uh, intent to pay as such have you faced th- those issues i mean ability to pay could be a challenge sometimes because of the environmental factors and the uh, geopolitical uh, scenarios but has intent to pay ever been a challenge and how did you kind of solve for it if it was yeah i think let's yeah grab over to you yeah shweta you want to add something yes i think um, in the last sort so many years uh, delays because of um, intent to pay i think would have just been a couple of instances just one or two individuals which we classify as will full defaults right that there right. is somebody who has the ability to repay and is not repaying so the bigger chunk of you know delays and uh, uh, delays are actually because of operational challenges on the True. ground uh, maybe there are issues or there's a crisis and the partners and because of which you know there are there have been challenges in reaching to the last mile or you know one of instances like a natural calamity or things like that because of which they have not gone okay or like a medical emergency in the family so right. substantial uh, you know um, there's been a lot of data that we have now to show that intent is not a problem if mm. you have done your curation and the onboarding process that is not compromised then intent to pay is, is lesser of the challenge act understood no that makes that makes a lot more sense Uh, I mean, I have observed like being, I mean, being investing for almost two, three years now uh, on your platform. I hardly, if ever, has uh, have faced a deferment in payment, but never a uh, default exactly. as such. And that is exactly. that's essentially you always mentioned there is some operational reason or some geopolitical situation or whatever it is. It's kind of also tagged there, so it kind of gives you that uh, what do you say? 
peace of mind that yeah this will happen and after seeing that come through like maybe a few days or a few weeks later it still comes through and that kind of gives you that peace of mind that yeah this is going to happen there is no challenge here uh, absolutely and having said that uh, i mean you have been uh, you know running uh, rangde successfully for almost a decade and a half uh, both of you i mean have, would have seen multitudes of cases which have essentially been you know a uh, success stories inspirations or something uh, you know the official interest so any any specific anecdotes that you would want to highlight or you would want to talk about uh, yeah i think uh, without uh, taking names but i can talk about regions where we are seeing you know some sort of sure. impact and ram touched upon it in the earlier conversation um so lots of stories from you know uh, northeastern india eastern europe i mean eastern uh, up i mean uh, where the uh, a uh, people uh, who were earlier denied credit by mm. formal banks now because of the fact that they have a credit score thanks to them borrowing from rangbe are now getting recognized by the banks uh, especially in nagaland you know we work in a very uh, one of the remotest districts in nagaland called mon district mm. where the entrepreneurs who were working there were systematically denied credit from the bank Oh. And um, in March this year, our partner there actually came back and told us that thanks to Rangbe intervening and uh, giving them the first couple of lo- loans to actually get their enterprises off the ground, mm. uh, they have now been able to, you know, get um, uh, credit from the bank there. For me, Amazing. this is a big sign that you know we are now beginning to move the needle. Right, and uh, the more we see this, the more we are actually enabling choice. for the communities they now have a choice uh, whether they want to borrow from rangbe they want to borrow from the bank in nagaland or they want to borrow from elsewhere because there is now data about them there is a credit score which earlier didn't exist for true. such individual true so we want to see more of this because that is true financial inclusion right that is truly restoring agency at the community where they take charge of their lives from being passive recipients and having no choice of where they want to borrow from we are mm. ensuring that they have this choice to decide what is best for them so for me this is like the biggest success that we have seen in the last uh, several years indeed you know i think this is this is really exciting uh, specifically you know to hear that the borrowers who are uh, initially were denied credit once they come on the platform they start essentially You know, doing the repayment cycle and getting a formal credit score are now being graduated to banks and formal institutions. That kind of opens up an entire slew of financial services for them, which could probably be uh, life-changing not only for them but for even the coming generations. So I think that is a huge impact that we can probably see over multiple decades as we uh, see. Uh, having said that, uh, Ram would love to hear from you about uh, social investing. Uh, you have to kind of explain it to me like i'm a 5 year old right let's let's kind of break it down to the core let's talk about uh, the basics the fundamentals and how it works yeah so social investing is all about giving a loan to someone mm-hmm. who is unable to get a loan from a bank mm-hmm. even though the person is credit worthy and trustworthy and wants to put this money to good use okay so they want to employ themselves or create more jobs for someone else uh, mm-hmm. and or you know create jobs in the communities they live in right so so in its simplest form it is a loan which is affordable and on very very friendly terms i understood so the social aspect of it is what i got from it How do you uh, how do you how will you explain the investing aspect to me if I'm a five year old kid? So you get to choose a fund. You come to the platform. You register yourself, and you can choose a fund or you can invest in individuals. Uh, and then post that, you know, you get to know where the money is actually disbursed, who the person is, who's actually got the money, uh, and then you can also go to your dashboard and track the repayments as and when the repayments come through. and once the repayments come you can actually choose to withdraw or reinvest in someone else or in reinvest in another fund so mm-hmm. so that's the model so it's a it's a cycle which creates 
uh, livelihoods and impact and also creates returns so you get returns of uh, 6 to 7% um you which is very modest but but the idea is to also you know really make it affordable for someone else who is uh, not root you know doesn't have access to it i can also add to that so it's probably the only platform where you can invest your pocket money <laughs> because the minimum investment that somebody can make on the platform is 100 rupees so if you have savings of 100 rupees you can invest on the platform yes i think the lowest uh, lowest entry barrier yes. here in asset yeah. class to yeah. be invested yeah. in perfect perfect i think uh, that was amazing one final question i would want to hear uh, hear about it from both of you uh after 5 years or maybe let's say a uh, 5 years down the line how would, what kind of an impact do you want to see rangde making on the nation like where do you want this to grow where from now like from where you are right now where to now yeah we want to see a day where you know we have 1 billion social investors on the platform mm-hmm. um and i would say that that would be a a good inflection point uh to start a credit revolution in the country indeed uh so yeah so that's what would uh we love to hear about uh, it from you uh, i would i would just send it to but <laughs> that's exactly what it perfect perfect i can see the uh, alignment in the thought process that you were talking about earlier right <laughs> I think said that I think it's been a pleasure having both of you here. Thank you so much. Uh this has really been a very uh great learning journey for me as well and I hope the audience finds this really insightful too. Uh at the sake of repeating myself, I mean you guys have been an inspiration and uh just keep doing what you're doing. I'm I'm sure I think there are a lot of great things ahead that will change the way India takes credit. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. So much. Yes. Thank you so much. So thank you so much uh, Smita and Ram for being with us today. Uh we've had two amazing conversations with you and found the story and then deki baat now we are here for the final and my favorite part of the episode called rapid fire round. Uh simple you'll just be asked uh, not more than 5 6 questions and you don't get time to think that's a challenge. And uh since there are uh, two of you here which is normally not the format that we follow what what essentially we'll do is uh we'll start the answer first to it smita and then uh, we'll move on to ram and ram you'll answer the same question uh all right so uh here goes the first question what time do you wake up 5 am ram 4 430 how soon i couldn't even imagine uh, i mean i'm someone who essentially you know, kind of sleeps through that but waking up at that time is something really impossible but i heard a lot of founders one so again sorry just going off topic a bit one tip to wake up early sleep early <laughs> ram you are you meditate in the evening before you sleep that makes me that makes sense thank you so much uh, one book that inspired you smita um creating a world without poverty ram infinite vision It's a biography yeah. of uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Venkatapa Govind Swami. He's a founder of uh, Arvind Ike. Got it. Uh, how do you disconnect from work, Smita? Run. Run. Workout. Interesting. I think this always is a challenge for a lot of founders because all the time there is something going on in their mind uh, about business, about some other challenges. So. It is it is really interesting to hear about you know how everyone disconnects. Uh having said that, right? What's your guilty pleasure? Smita, let's start with you. Workout. <laughs> you can't you can't give me a repetitive answer. It has to be something. Dance. Okay, I mean, okay. Ah, Ram, what do you? Choc- chocolates. Oh, that's more like it. Ah. <laughs> uh, One final question, right? If there was one thing that you could kind of change about the way you build Rangde, what would it be? Uh, starting with you, Smita. Um, build a great team. And Ram. Well, get into a you know, uh, invest a lot in mindfulness, mm-hmm. and also you know physical well-being, both mental and physical well-being. 
uh, we discover it much later perfect perfect and i promise this is the last question uh one final advice uh for the entrepreneurs this is not don't this is more like one thing that you should be cognizant of so yeah let's start with you smita always um be clear about your why makes sense i think that is really important ra who to you find a great mentor until you find a great mentor you know it may be good for you to not start Oh, for that and means- not and not all mentors are great. Yeah. So yeah, because you'll have a lot of people wanting to mentor you. So please be careful about who you choose as mentors. True, makes sense. Makes sense. I think that was really helpful. Thank you so much, uh, Smita and Ram, for being a good sport, and it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shreyas. Thank you.